Hi YouTube, it's Janelle here. In this video, I'm gonna be talking about how I managed to pay off $15,000 of credit card and student loan debt in like a year or two. Um, and I'm gonna talk about exactly what I did and what resources I used. Um, but before I jump into that, I just want to say that I'm really excited to announce that I'm gonna be doing my first YouTube live event ever um i've been thinking about doing youtube live for a while and i even posted um a quick poll on the channel and a lot of people said that you know the weekends weren't really good so they would rather do it during the week and now that the holiday time is upon us and i have some more free time off work i figured that this would be a great time to do it during the week so drum roll i'm gonna be doing my first youtube live on wednesday um december 27th at 8 30 p.m est time um if you are uh, cst time that's 7 30 and if you are ps tea time that is 5 30 so um i just want to make sure everybody knows the correct time and date so you can jump on um to youtube and tune in to my first ever youtube live event i'm really excited to talk to you guys i feel like i get a lot of emails and comments on the channel but this will kind of be an opportunity to really just respond to your questions like in the moment um and really be able to share anything that um you guys are wondering about either me my channel or any questions that you have related to personal finance okay so now i want to go ahead and jump in to to the video because I've gotten a lot of people asking me about how exactly was I able to pay down so much of my debt so quickly after graduating and I don't want people to think that I got some high paying job you know I did go to a great school I got a great degree but I decided to come back to my own community and teach kids in the local public schools here so I was not making no luxurious salary no high you know paying salary I didn't have a high paying job at that time I was living at home with my parents still because I had just graduated college but you know it was it was tough like I was trying to help out my family trying to help out my mom I was I had had a lot of credit card um, debt that I was trying to pay down all the payments on those cards and um, I mentioned before on the channel that I took out um, like a little bit over five thousand um, dollars to go study abroad so I had like a combination of payments that I needed to start making and the only good thing about all of this at that time was that I I just I grew up like I didn't I don't like owing money even though you know growing up we never had a lot of money it just was it was a thing in my house that like you shouldn't be borrowing money and owing money to people um i don't know why it was just maybe it's just like my dad and my mom the way they are they just were like no you know if you don't have it just don't do it don't go asking your friends or asking your family to lend you money because then you have that stress on you of like owing that person money back and i internalize that like that's so true for me now i don't like asking people to help me with money i don't like people having to um you know come out of their pocket to help me out i want to be able to be independent and be able to say i can help others actually i don't need you know to rely on other people for help and it's totally okay to rely on other people for help it just it becomes a problem at least in my opinion when it becomes a dependency and it's like over time you don't have no intention of getting out of a situation where you're always asking people for help and you're totally fine just spending the rest of your life asking for to borrow money that's there's something in your mindset and the psychology around money that you probably want to think about and start to change so that you feel more empowered to start making changes in your life that will allow you to have your own money instead of constantly having to borrow so that being said I want to start by saying I did have to borrow money because a thousand dollars every paycheck that was just not enough and so at that time I actually got really lucky because um, a friend of mine had told me about um, about different like peer-to-peer -peer lending companies that she were coming up they were becoming very popular and so I didn't know much about how it worked but I just went online and I went on to the one that I use is lending club I know there's a lot of different ones but I went on to lending club um, I created an account and this was back in 2012 at that time I had a very steady job I was a teacher I know I had job security I wasn't leaving anytime soon and I had signed a two-year contract so I knew that for the next 24 months you know from 2011 to 2013 I was gonna definitely have a steady job with a steady paycheck that was coming in every single two weeks and I wasn't necessarily in doubt about my money coming in so um, that was definitely one of the reasons why I think it was good for me to, to do this um, but I do want to like I made a list of the pros and cons of of using any kind of you know personal loan or peer-to-peer -peer lending um type of thing but specifically the lending club because for me i can only talk about my personal experience and i use lending club and um so for me it's like okay i actually ended up using them twice and it actually really helped me but i know it might not be the best thing for a lot of people first i'll talk about the pros it's really fast 
I mean, I literally had my money in like, I want to say six or seven days after I submitted the application and everything was processed. I got my money in my checkings account literally six days later, which was amazing because like that's so fast for you to end up with a few thousand dollars that you didn't have and you really, really need to be able to tackle whatever situation you're in, whatever debt, whatever stuff you owe. So that was, that was definitely a pro. Um, the other thing that I've noticed is that it's such an easy process. Like I, I went online, I went to the website, I saw, I filled in all the information, your name, your birthday, social security number, how much money you want to borrow, all this stuff. Right. And then they pull up your credit report. They pull up, you know, payment history, whatever information about you they use to make the best decision about whether they want to lend you money. So the process is actually really easy because everything is online. So you, you literally just fill out this form and then they say, great, we have all your information. We're going to think about it and look at your application and make the best decision and we'll get back to you. And then within a few days, you get an email saying whether you got approved or not. And then they go through the next few steps when you're done. And you, if you do get approved, it's really easy to make your payments back to them because they link your account to your checking to your, like the bank account that you use to set everything up. So basically they deposit the money in the bank account that you tell them to, and then they keep, they keep it linked. So every month on whatever day, let's say you pay on the fifth of every month, you don't even have to worry about setting, setting up payments or going to a website every month to pay or making a call to make a payment. It's automatically deducted on the fifth of every month or whatever day they give you for your payment of every single month. So when you get paid, you just go into your, you know, online banking and you'll see that they deducted the amount that you owe them. So it, it's not even something that you have to do. You don't, you just have to make sure that you have enough money in there every single month so that when they charge you, you know, you're not going to go into the red and your bank account is not going to go into auto draft or something like that because you didn't have enough. So you have to just make sure that you're you're keeping a certain amount of money in your checking account. And I've talked about this in other videos where there's a certain amount that you should have and you should constantly be monitoring your accounts. Um, the last thing that I think was definitely a good um, thing, a pro, right, is that uh, it helped my credit score over time. So this was back in 2012 when I first applied for this account. And at that time, my credit score was probably in the 600s, like maybe 615 or in the 620s at best. It was not very good. It was, I had just, when I graduated college, it was in the high 500s. And then I did like, you know, I was paying my payments and doing whatever I could. So by the time 2012, a year later, it was a little bit above 600. Um, and then at that time, you know, it wasn't that great, but by the next year from 2012, it was at 615, 620. In 2013, it went up to 650. So it went up like 30 or 40 points just from me making my payments every month to um, Lending Club. Not even making my payments, just from Lending Club taking, you know, the same amount of money from me every single month. It shows, you know, my payment history had been improving and it was me consistently making payments, which really helped my credit score in that year. I recommend it only if um, you're somebody who was like me and, and at that time, which is you had a steady income, which I talked about. I was a teacher and I, had, I knew my job was steady and I knew it was secure and I knew how much money I was gonna be making every two weeks. Um, you know, you have a good credit score, like a, a, a decent credit score. Like if your score is in the 400s or 500s, chances are you're not gonna get approved. So you wanna at least try to be close to 600 or a little bit above 600 is probably best. If you have a low credit score, you're gonna get offered a really high interest rate. So that's the bad part, right? Whereas if you wait a little bit longer and improve your credit score over time, then you apply, your interest rate will be much lower. So it's better to apply if you have a really good credit score but it's a catch 22 because it's really hard to increase your credit score if you're not able to pay down a lot of your debt. So it's kind of like that, you know, chicken or the egg, which one should I do first? For me, I just decided to do this and pay off all the debt that I owed using the loan. Um, and that actually just worked out for me because I was still very young. And so four or five years later, here I am. And it was, it's still totally fine from that time. So the next thing I would say you have to consider is if you, um, are going to be able to, you know, lower the amount of interest that you would pay over time. So that's going to be huge. And it's going to require you to do some math, right? If your credit card interest is 23, 24%, and it's growing every single month that you're not able to pay the whole bill, your every time you try to make a payment, it's like you're barely cutting down your debt because you're constantly growing at a really fast rate, at a really high rate. So at that point, it's important to sit down and say, okay, if I owe this much money at this interest rate and I pay it back in this much time by sending this much money every month until I'm done, how much total would I have paid them 
in the end, right? And then compare that to what the lending club or another peer-to-peer -peer lending site or another personal loan might offer you. So if you say, oh, actually, if I borrow this much money and I have this much time to pay it back and the interest rate they're offering me is this, I'm gonna save this much money or it's gonna be the same. If it's the same, maybe it's not worth it for you or maybe it is. You have to make that decision based on what you, know, you prefer. Versus if it is, if, if you're gonna save a lot more money by getting a lower interest rate from a personal loan, rather than keep continuing to pay off really high interest rate credit card debt, then it definitely might be something to consider saving thousands of dollars on um, by, doing, by doing the personal loan. So it's definitely something that you have to sit down and really do the math on. It's not something I would recommend you just say, oh, okay, I'm just gonna try it because it's gonna make my life easier. I mean, if the math doesn't make sense, then don't do it, right? Like put in a little bit more work and save money. So at the end of the day, it's a balance. Um, and if it's worth it for you to pay a little bit more to have less stress and to have just one payment and all that stuff, then maybe it's worth it for you. But that's a decision that you have to make given your situation. So now I wanna talk about what the cons were from my experience because there definitely were some, even though it sounds like all good and gravy and lovely that it helped me pay down a lot of debt. There were some things that I'm like, eh, yeah, but I didn't really like that. So the first thing is, I had to pay interest. I mean, you're not never gonna be able to really borrow money from for free from people unless they're your family and they love you. Um, unfortunately, my family didn't have the money to just be like, here you go, Chanelli, here's $10,000, pay off your debt, girl. You don't owe us any interest on it, pay back when you can. If my family's in that situation, great. I wouldn't even be posting these videos, <laughs> but that's not the case. So, um, you know, you do have to pay interest, which means you're gonna have to pay a borrowing fee. You have to pay to borrow money. It's just like when you go to the store and you see something that you really like and you wanna buy it. So you're like, oh, I really like, you know, this, this pair of boots. It's really nice. The color looks great. The style, the fabric, and the fit is great. I'm, I'm gonna buy these boots. And then you look at the price and you're like, oh, it's not worth it to me to pay that much money for these boots. It's the same thing. If you need to borrow a certain amount of money, you have to figure out how much is it worth it for you to pay to borrow that money. You know, how much would you pay to borrow $5,000? How much would you pay to borrow $10,000? If you would pay, you know, 100 bucks, 200, 300 dollars, but not more than that, then you really have to think about, you know, whether it makes sense. Um, because my first year borrowing from the Lending Club was 2012. I borrowed. What did I borrow? Let me look at my notes. Um, I borrowed $6,080. So that was my first loan that I took from them. And at that point, my interest rate was 21.63%. But my credit card that I had at the time was 29%. So I was actually able to cut down on the interest that I was paying by using the personal loan instead of just paying the credit card back with my money. So even though that still is very high, again, I told you guys, in 2012, my credit score was just a little bit above 600, and it had just been in the high 500s before that. So that's why they gave me a very high interest rate. At that point, um, every $100 that I borrowed, right, I had to pay back $100 and $21.63 for basically for borrowing $100. So in the end, I ended up paying um, $1,315.33 in interest to borrow the $6,080. To me now, if somebody said, oh, this is a deal I'm offering you, I would say, heck no, get out of here. That's ridiculous. That's so much money. That is literally a fifth or a chunk of how much you know I'm borrowing. It doesn't even make sense to, to pay that much. But that's me now because I have other like I have other options. So my credit score is higher. I could borrow money for cheaper than that, um, for less than that, and I also don't necessarily need to borrow anymore. So my mindset is different. But at this time, where my credit score was very low and I did not have a lot of savings, I didn't have any savings, and I had a lot of bills. It seemed like something that made sense for me at that time. So it's always about what situation that you're in and what kind of factors play into your decision. So the second time that I took out the loan, it was in 2013 and my credit score had bumped up to, to 650. I had finished paying off the other loan and at this point I had used the $6,000 that I borrowed to completely pay off my student loan, which was a little bit more than $5,000 that I took out to go study abroad. So at that point, my student loan was completely gone. My credit score increased a ton and I had already been making the payments every single month to pay back the lending club. So at this point, my credit score went up and I was in a better position, but I still had um, credit card debt. So I was like, okay, I still, I'm still dealing with this 29% interest, whatever. So let me just, you know, pay. Let me just start paying again. Like basically I decided, let me go back and see if I can get another loan. So what I ended up doing was borrowing another 
$8,280 because at that point my credit card debt had dropped down I was making payments on my credit card but I still had about $7,000 left on one credit card so what I did was I borrowed $8,280 from the lending club again and this was in 2013 at this point my interest rate that they offered me dropped from 21.63% down to 14.14%. So look at the difference. I mean, I dropped almost 10 full points because my credit score was so much better. So, and this goes to show, I mean, I talk about this on my channel all the time and on my Instagram, always talking about it. If your credit score is high, you get better deals. <laughs> you pay less to borrow money when you need it. So it's really a, an awesome tool to have in your pocket to have a high credit score because even if you don't care about credit cards, there's other things in your life where your credit score will really help you. So having a higher credit score helped me so much because it cut down the amount that I would have to pay to borrow money. So in the end, in 2013, I ended up paying $1,170.89 to borrow $8,280. That's less than the interest I paid before to borrow 6,000. So it's crazy when I look back at these numbers, I'm like, it's insane how much more money you can save and how many better deals will be available to you and more opportunities available to you when you have a better credit score. Um, and this was just a difference of 50 points, right? From 600, I went up to 650 and I had, and dropped down my interest rate so much and was able to save a lot more money. So, in total, I ended up paying back $9,795.90, and I paid that off in a year. So um, th that's just kind of like so you can see the perks of, of, you, of having a high credit score. But I want to go back to talking about some of the cons because paying that interest is definitely one of the cons. I didn't like having to pay $1,000 plus to borrow. But um, I honestly, I see this as like, yes, it's a con because like nobody really wants to pay money to, to have to do this. But at the end of the day, it helps you a lot. So I see it as like it was kind of worth it, so it's fine. Um, the other con I would say is that my credit score did take a hit immediately. Like when I bought, when I accepted the offer and I actually put in my application officially, my credit score went down a few points, probably like seven, eight or nine points because it was a hard inquiry. But remember the, the pro was that they give you a, they give you a chance to check your rate before they actually do the hard pull. So it doesn't affect your credit score the first time when you see what different choices you have on the chart. So the con is that if you do get it and you decide to go through with it, they do check your score, they do um, you know, do a hard credit pull. And then the last thing that I would say is a con is that it's not guaranteed that you're gonna get approved. So you check your rate, you see it, and you're like, oh, that looks good, oh, that's a great deal, I want that one, you click it, then you go through, get the hard pull, and then they actually decide. So it's not guaranteed when you look at the chart that you're gonna get that deal, it's just potential offers that you know they're offering. So that to me was kind of like, oh man, you know, what if I don't get accepted? So you're, you're taking a risk. And here, what I would say is to call up the, the, uh, the business, the company, whoever you're trying to borrow money from, call them and ask them, hey, this is my situation. I just created an account. Like, do you think I would be likely to get it? I really don't want to apply if you feel like I don't have a good chance. And try to talk to different people and see if they can give you a hint um, that you would get it or not. Sometimes they won't, but sometimes they will. And it's worth it to ask a few different people. Okay, so then the last thing I want to say is that you it, it might not be for you, right? The, it, personal loan sounds great, and it really helped me in a lot of ways. I did it not once but twice, and it really helped me a lot. But I was in a very specific situation. It might not be for you if you have variable income. If every single month you don't know how much you're going to make, you're not the kind of person who has a secure, steady paycheck every single month, then this might not be for you because you have to make sure that every single month on the day that you have to pay them, the money will be there since they're going to automatically deduct it from your checking account. So you don't want to play around with that and then end up paying more in late fees and, you know, um, penalty fees and whatever else. I don't know, I never made a late payment, so I don't know what happens, but I know in the terms and conditions, it says there's a late fee and there's a penalty and stuff like that. So you don't even wanna get into that. If you think that might happen, if you're not sure if you would be able to always have the money, then this is not a good option for you. So wait until you have a steady job, wait until you have more steady income, and then consider it later. Um, the other thing I didn't like, which I think 
you know, you have to kind of keep in mind, it might not be for you if you don't want people at your job to know about you applying for a loan. Because when I applied both times, they called my job and they asked at my job, hey, is it true that Janelia Spina works here at this place? We want to verify her that her employment is accurate. Because then you do have to tell them what your salary is, how much money you make and where you work when you apply. So they need to call the job and make sure that, you know, you really work there. If you're going to be like, I do not want anybody at my job knowing that I'm applying for this. Like, this is something personal. I don't want anyone to know. Then then you probably don't want to apply for this because they're going to call your job. And they're going to say that they're calling to verify that you work there. Um, the other thing I would say is if you don't have a good credit score, right? Like, at that time, I had at least a 600. If you have less than 600, um, I, I mean, I would do some research and see. Like, if you're doing a different lending service or if you're doing um, a personal loan from another uh, organization or a company research like what are the credit scores of the people before me who applied who got approved or call them and ask them hey what is the average credit score of the person that you accept or that you approve because if you're not in that range you then you you probably won't get it so you don't want to waste your time doing all this stuff doing the application and then get a hard pull your credit score drops a few points and it was for nothing because you don't even get approved so you want to make sure um that you know your credit is in the range that they usually approve. I don't think I would have been able to get out of debt as quickly and um, as successfully as I did if it wasn't for these personal loans that I ended up taking out. This was what, six years ago now? 2012 is about to be 2018 and this, this is the first one I took out in 2012. So I definitely wanna say um, it helped me tremendously. But again, I recognize all these things about my situation that I had a steady job, I knew exactly how much income I was making, I had job security, you know, all that stuff. So these are things to consider. That's all that I had for you guys today. If you have any comments or questions, you can definitely put those down below. Check out my Instagram, check out my Facebook. Um, and if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please go ahead and subscribe right now. Show me love, send me requests or questions that you have. I love engaging with every single one of my viewers and subscribers here on my channel and come back right here on wednesday december 27th at 8 30 p.m est for my very first ever youtube live definitely come back and participate in that i would love to see you here and answer any questions that you might have for me till next time peace